Good morning, David. Yes, we have the Diamond Trust Bank results, as you rightly said, and we've seen a little bit of lackluster performance from the Kenyan side, but a boosted by their subsidiaries. But we're going to have that discussion shortly with our market watcher. But first, let us have a look at the currency where we saw the Kenyan shilling close flat against the dollar on Wednesday at 83.8090, the same level it closed. Uh, during the previous session. Crossing over to the Nairobi Securities Exchange, the benchmark NSC 20 share index broke a three-day losing streak to close up 1.5% to 4,918.27 points with strong performance coming from Safaricom, which accounted for 72% of the day's trading. With us in studio, we have our market watcher for the day, who is Hazel Ndiho, a research analyst with Genghis Capital. Thank you, Beatrice, for having me. Yes. Now, let's first uh, start with yesterday's news, but we saw the Treasury bills coming in mm -hmm. lower, the yields for the 182-day T-bill and the 364-day T-bill, losing 80 basis points between the two of them. Is that a signal that we're likely to have a more activity into the Nairobi Securities Exchange? Yes, I think it is, because you see when we when the interest rates for the Treasury bills decline, it means the Treasury securities become less attractive to investors. And so they look for alternative alternative places of investing. And one of these places would be the stock exchange, which, as we can already see, is an, an upward trend again. So I think it's likely to continue higher up as more investors venture into this as opposed to the Treasury bills. Mm -hmm. Of course, the 91-day T-bill is coming today, which is a benchmark for interest rates, and I'm sure we'll be keeping an eye on that. Crossing over to the banks, we've seen quite a some good activity coming in from the banks. Mm -hmm. A lot of good results. We saw uh, Cooperative Bank yesterday giving a 33% rise. Previous day we had KCB and Equity coming in. But this morning we've just seen Diamond Trust Bank coming in and the Kenya performance did not seem to be very good. Uh, but we saw a little bit of better performance from the subsidiaries. What do you read into this? Well, I think Diamond Trust Bank is focusing on the regional expansion at the moment. As we've seen, they've increased the stakes in Tanzania to 50 to 63% and in Uganda to 53%. And we're seeing that they are more they're focusing more on the subsidiaries to bring in more revenue. And that's why would you can see that the loans and advances, for example, of the Kenya branch has declined, but overall for the whole entire group it's gone up. Yes. Yeah, we saw in Kenya the decline was about 4% as opposed to a 3% rise from the group. Yeah. Is that also an indication that the first quarter may have been uh, not too good for Diamond Trust Bank? I think so because if you look even at the deposits, they declined. Um, I'm, I'm, I have a feeling that they are focusing especially on expansion, growing their asset base as opposed to the loans and advances in Kenya, for example, which is more or less a mature market for them. Mm -hmm. How do you see the share performing today in light of this uh, results that we just seen this morning? I, I personally don't think it will move much because the results aren't anything to write home about. So it will probably move by little, probably 1%, 2%. Up or down? Um, well, I think up because the results are still a profit, so it will still it still enhances confidence with the people within the investors. Okay. Just that the confidence is not as high as compared to the other the confidence that's been evoked by other banks. All right. Yeah. Looking at Safaricom, which has been making headlines for a couple of weeks now, and yesterday we saw it, of course, of course, crossing a new five-year high. We saw it getting to five, 750 shillings before dropping to about 735, which was a 3% rise, 3.5% rise. Mm -hmm. Do you expect the momentum to continue? Yes, I, act, I think it will, as people have more confidence in it. Yesterday we saw quite a bit of activity in it by both locals and foreigns. Uh, and today I still expect that the activity will continue as the confidence in the stock is really high. And so, yes, I expect the price to continue on an upward trend. For you, what do you think investors are looking out for when they buy Safaricom? Well, um, I pro personally, right at the moment, I think they are looking at uh, the price movement, how high it can go. The more people expect the price to go up, the more they'll enter into the stock in an bid to sort of make a profit with the price differences at the end of the day or at the end when it reaches its peak. Mm -hmm. And so I think people still expect the price to go up and as a result they'll still continue entering into the stock as the prices continue rising. How high do you think this price can get? 
Well, we've seen it rise to 8.15 before. Yes. Hopefully it can reach that level this time round also again. All right. Crossing over to TransCentury, one of the investment funds that is very heavily invested in infrastructure, has now increased its stake uh, in uh, Civicon by adding it a billion, one billion shillings. Mm -hmm. And Civicon, of course, is one of the heavy haulage companies that they acquired uh, uh, last uh, year ago, I think, mm -hmm. a, a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. what, does, what can we read into this? Because it seems now they are trying to get into mining, they're trying to get into oil. What is the what is the light that you see on uh, uh, Transcentury looking forward? Well, I think they are looking ahead. We, Kenya has recently discovered oil deposits, and it's set out to become a booming market in the future, with many oil deposits being discovered in Tukana, and they want to be in it from the very beginning, uh, so that they can reap the benefits in the future when the oil industry is fully developed in mm -hmm. Kenya. Based on the investment in Civicon, um, what would you expect in terms of projection for the company in terms of profits, earnings, bottom line, top line? Well, I think the first years will still be slow, um, considering that we still have a long way to develop even the mining industry in Kenya with infrastructure and everything. But in the future, I think they will reap the results of the investment into the company. Mm -hmm. yes. And then looking forward, of course, we're seeing a lot of improvement in infrastructure in the, in the Kenyan uh, economy. Yeah. And we've seen a lot of activity and macroeconomic stability. Is that something that is also likely to feed into this particular stock? Yes, well, um, whenever there's micro macroeconomic stability, uh, stocks move, uh, the markets play well, and we see very different markets performing well. The stock exchange, the infrastructure for example and even with the CBK lowering its rates which is expected to lead to the lowering of the lending rates in the banks we expect that they'll be able to get loans at cheaper rates okay. and as a result it should be able to help them to further develop.